Indian markets have been trading at a premium valuation all the time in last few years. And uh, if we compare it with the emerging markets, we always have been trading at a uh, premium. Like 2019, we were at 65% premium, but with the increased uh, you know, performance in the Indian market, elevated levels, we are now at almost 90% premium to the emerging markets. Some of it could be attributed to the derating in the emerging markets and also uh, the elevated levels of performance in India. So, yes, to some extent, we are uh, on a stretch valuation. If we look at even from the discounted cash flows method also, uh, we are moderately overvalued. Uh, I was looking at the historical number also. So at current, uh, you know, 24,500 odd level Nifty, we are trading at about 23 times forward earning. And uh, if we compare it with the 10-year average and 15-year average, it is almost 13 to 20 percent kind of a uh, or trading at a higher valuations and long-term averages of 10 and 15 years respectively. In terms of asset classes, right? Um, what's what's the approach with this wealth management uh, arm of yours? Because a lot of money is getting into equities, uh, but there are also debt funds which are drawing interest. You know, with the uh, international inclusion of of, um, of Indian bonds on the international bond indices, gold being a favored uh, safe haven asset that investors uh, like to invest in. So, how do you build a diversified portfolio? Uh, and what do you tell, uh, as part of your wealth manage management thesis, uh, to investors on return expectations in this environment, given where the markets are? So you've spoken about the, all three asset classes, equity, debt, and gold. Uh, first, I'll take your question on the return expectations. I think with the elevated levels of uh, Indian markets, with rich valuations, moderately over valuations, uh, I think one uh, investors need to moderate their expectations uh, last if we look at this year performance alone markets have given uh, even after the correction 17% kind of returns in the uh, nifty level and if we look at the micro cap almost 30% plus returns going forward i think investors need to moderate their expectation to a, a mid teens or low teens kind of a cagr so the 12 to 15% kind of returns will be uh, good returns in the equity side I think debt is an interesting space. Uh, we have been witnessing uh, inflationary pressures across the world, including in India. And I don't think so. RBI is in hurry to cut the interest rate at this moment. But uh, over the next two years, three years, we will see the interest rate cuts coming in India significantly uh, along with the world. I think in a synchronized manner across the world, we will see uh, interest rates coming down. And that makes debt as an interesting asset class. So that's where we are, uh, you know, suggesting our investors to have the right allocations on the debt side as well, because they can gain mark-to-market gains uh, through these interest rate cu cuts coming in India and uh, other countries as well. Gold as an asset class in India uh, found, uh, you know, have always been uh, in the foreplay. And this is the why, because, you know, Indians have a fancy to accumulate gold through jewelry as well as coins and so on. So this has been an alternate for the world. This has been an alternate class, but this has been a main asset class for India. And they've been investing at different levels only. So I don't think that uh, that that's good. For, that's good for India because, you know, when gold prices are at all time high levels, you feel good about, you know, you have certain margin of safety. As an allocation, we always recommend our customers to have a 5 to 10 percent kind of an allocation on the gold and silver uh, as uh, commodities, uh, depending upon their risk appetite. 